Welcome to episode 6 of Rabs TV, brought to you by Desjardins Securities. As always, I am your host, Sean Kleisinger. And it's time to talk to the Mariner, and it's going to be intercepted, it's going to be intercepted, has it down a bit. Thank you've all seen the passion that you bring. Um, thank you on behalf of you. Sponsored by Desjardins Security. The Jets the top it up again, and they call a touchdown. It was a tough loss for the Regina Rams this past week in Alberta. However, the page has been flipped and it is a brand new week. The last home game of the season is this Friday against the UBC Thunderbirds. On this week's episode, defensive backs coach Vincent Donaldson stops by and defensive back himself, Jeff Propp. And also, between two horns is back as a couple cousins go head to head. Mitch Picton versus Noah Picton. I am with defensive back Jeff Prop. Jeff, thank you very much for taking the time on Rams TV. Jeff, the first game against UBC this season was a close affair. What jumps out at you most when you think back at that game? We played pretty well in all facets of the game. Defense did its part, offense put up points, and specials was pretty clean throughout most of the game. Jeff, I gotta ask you, when it's game day, you wake up in the morning, you open the fridge, what do you got to eat on game day to make you to feel your body to make plays on the field? Well, if it's an afternoon game, definitely got to get those eggs. If it's a late night game, got to get some pasta. Over easy? Hard. Wow. Hard! Jeff, I got to ask you. Earlier on this season, Brady Will challenged you to grow a beard. If you were to challenge one of your teammates out there to grow a beard like you, 
which teammate would you call out? Your live Rams TV, what, what do you say? Jeff Prop for sure, just because he's the only other ginger bearded guy. Because <laughs> he, thought, he thought that you were the one to, with the next best on the team to grow a beard, and then you come in to the room here, and your face is naked, it's bare. Like, I got a better beard going on than you. I'm quite disappointed. Like, tell me your point of view on this, please. Well, I had it growing out. Uh, just shaved it off about three days ago. I got uh, a teammate lid, gave, you gave a, me a fade. Couldn't wait a couple days? You couldn't wait a couple days to show it off on rap. I guess you didn't know you were on. I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. Didn't know, otherwise, it would still be here. It'll be back in a couple weeks. How about you just keep it going for the playoff run here? Uh, that's what I plan on doing. Grow it out, the big old ginger beard. Is it going to be better than Brady Wills, you think? Absolutely. Like, like how much better? About as better as how Saskatchewan long? is than Manitoba. Wow. How long can you grow that thing? Like, are we talking like, can you? Is it just like like mine, or can you like grow it like solid couple inches off your face? Just a bit off the face. It'll just get pretty thick. I think all the fans are looking forward to see your beard in a few weeks. Jeff, thank you very much for taking the time on Rams TV. Good luck on Friday. Thank you. I am with defensive backs coach Vincent Donaldson. Vincent, thank you for taking the time on Rams TV. Appreciate it. Vincent, I want to ask you about the UBC Thunderbirds. What are some things that your guys did well in the first meeting of the season that you hope will carry over on Friday night at Mosaic Stadium? Uh, I believe the biggest thing is uh, rallying to the ball and creating turnover for ourselves so we can uh, score points. Vincent, I got to ask you, what was the loudest stadium that you played in front of in your college days? The loudest, uh, I would have to say definitely at home at MSU at Michigan State University. It was, it was very loud, but it, it's several. You got Notre Dame. Uh, you got USC. Uh, it was uh, quite a few. And uh, probably the loudest, I would have to say, probably was Florida State. How about the big house in Michigan? The big house in Michigan, they're okay. I can't give them too much credit because they are rivals. <laughs> <laughs> what is one quarterback in college that you picked off or in the pros that you kind of look at and you'd be like, man, I picked that guy off, something that, that you're proud of? I would say uh, Danny Barrett, uh, see Doug Flutie, uh, uh, Jeff Garcia. All of them are uh, great quarterbacks, and I took pride in uh, as far as you know, picking those guys off uh, with them being you know, who they are and the things they were able to accomplish. Uh, I'm happy I was able to get my hands on some balls from those guys. What is your most memorable interception, that being said? My most memorable interception is probably going to be my first one that I got against uh, Danny Barrett. I, uh, I vividly remember that. Stampeders. Uh, yeah, actually, he was playing for the Stampeders for that time at that time, and uh, yeah, I'd be against Danny Barrett. What is your best memory as a Saskatchewan Rough Rider? Could be a certain play, like the interception, or it could be a certain season, um, a certain game. What sticks out at you when you look back at your playing career with the Rough Riders? Uh, what sticks out, I can't narrow it down just to one thing, but uh, a few different things that stick out for me is definitely would be uh, going to the Great Cup in uh, 97, even though I blew my knee out in the Western Final, but that was a very uh, memorable year. Uh, also, just the uh, camaraderie of uh, the teammates I had, right? Uh, that that was that was awesome, and, and I was fortunate enough you know, to play with a lot of uh, guys that are Hall of Famers and in, uh, in the Plaza of Honor, like, you know, uh, Ray Elgar, Darner Sees, uh, Ken Austin. So just that being part of that and uh, playing with guys like Bobby Jurison, and that was, uh, uh, you know, very, very, I guess you could say now, I look back on very uh, rewarding, you know, for me. But my, my biggest memory is just laying hits on people. Right. <laughs> What's it feel like for a former player to see the, at your time it was Taylor Field, but how's it feel for you personally that there's only two games left for the Rough Riders at the old stomping grounds? I feel, you know what, I feel that uh, <clears throat> the coaches over there have done an amazing job in getting things turned around and uh, actually taking the time and going through the process to do it their way. And now, you know, we're starting to see the results of, uh, of the coaches sticking to their guns and believing in the ideology and... Uh, you know, moving forward, so I'm uh, I'm very happy and very uh, proud of uh, what they've been able to accomplish this year. Are you looking forward to seeing the Riders play in the new stadium next year? 
Uh, definitely, uh, that's going to be something that's uh, that's going to be very exciting uh, week in and week out. Uh, I'm definitely going to try to make as many games as I can. It's a, it's a beautiful stadium, a beautiful facility, and uh, I'm going to be happy that we're going to be playing in it also. Vincent, thank you very much for the time uh, here on Rams TV, and best of luck on Friday night. We are back here on Between Two Horns. I'm with Noah Picton and Mitch Picton. We all know what these two guys can do on the field, but the question is, what are they going to do when Between Two Horns comes for you? That was pretty. That was pretty. That was pretty cheesy. Eh? Anyways, rock paper scissors, everyone. We know how this goes. Fists in. Best of one. See who goes first. Oh. Okay. Mitch. What team has won the most NBA titles? NBA season around the corner. Which team has won the most National Basketball Association championships? Not too sure here. I'm not a huge NBA guy. Uh, I'll go with the Chicago Bulls. You were incorrect, Mitch. Uh, is it the Celtics? You are correct, Noah. Uh, Any? Do you, do you, this doesn't count for the record, but how many have they won? Do you want to take a crack at that? Um, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, it was maybe seven. It was 17. You were <laughs> seven's in there. <laughs> Noah. Just rounded up a few. I'm there. This one's for you now. All right. What year? Did the Chicago Cubs last win the World Series? I heard it was there's rumblings. That was like 107 years ago, or something. So if you watch Sports Center, you should know it. Yeah. Um, I don't really want to do the quick math. Is it 1907? Oh, you were so close. I kind of gave a, Mitch a hint there. I said you were close, but I'm gonna go with uh, 1908. You are correct, Mitch. <laughs> right. You are correct. We are on the board here. Both at 1 1. Mitch, what number did Tom Brady wear at Michigan? I'm just going to take a crack and say he uh, kept the same number in the pros, go with 12. You were incorrect, Mitch. Noah? <laughs> Was it 10? You're correct, Noah. Uh, you scared me there. <laughs> All right. Mitch, oh, sorry, this one's for Noah. Yeah. No. What MLB team did Tom Brady get drafted by? Uh, the Montreal Expos. You are correct. As Good job. Catcher. As a catcher. Add, add it on. Yeah. Else that? That's he made a good decision in playing for the you for the Patriots. Year, you know what year it was in? Was it '98? I think it was '95 or '96. Oh, really? Yeah. Young, young stud. Yeah. Mitch, what is the oldest? Ballpark in the major leagues. Fenway? You are correct, Mitch. It was 1912 that opened, and I believe Wrigley Field was 1914. Noah, how many Super Bowls in a row did the Buffalo Bills lose? Four. You are correct, Mitch, or Noah. Do you, wanna, do you remember who they played in those four Super Bowls? Um, this, isn't, this is off the record. You know, you know I, I can't recall. I just know. Um, I think it was the Giants, Redskins, and two against the Cowboys. Okay. Tough luck. Tough tough break for, for Jim Kelly and company. It is very tough luck. I, I don't like What's the score here? Do, do you know Redsky? I don't know the score. I think it's not even close. I, 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 what? I, I, think, I think Mitch. I think it's 3 2. Uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> 3 2. Three, three, let's go 3 3. I think it's 3 3. Okay. All right, Mitch. I think this is the last question here. No, nope, we got two more. Mitch, who was the Saskatchewan Rough Riders quarterback in the 1997 Grey Cup? Were you born yet? Yeah, I would have been uh, two years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I'm trying, I'm trying to think here. I have no idea. Might as well take a crap. I'm trying to think of old. <laughs> I don't know the oldest, uh, the oldest QB or the Riders I can think of. I don't know. It's the, Just say I, I know Neilon Green wasn't there. Who we'll go Neilon Green? Incorrect. That's that's a that's an honest shot, but you're incorrect. Do you know what Noah? No, I was making fun of Mitch, but I wasn't sure either. Um, <laughs> maybe Rocky Butler was that his time? 
You're, he was a little bit after, but... Is that you? Than Mitch, I think. It was Reggie Slack. Oh, there Reggie Slack. Yeah, good, did, for, yeah. good for Reggie, I wouldn't guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Noah. All right. This is the question everyone, want, everyone wants to know the answer of. What year was Dairy Queen founded? That's a good question. And, um, you know, like football, I like to be deep, be prepared going into games. You know, I watch I watch film of opposing teams. I, I want to expect what they're going to do to us. And, and I, I, I tried to do a little bit of research prior to this conversation, and I figured you would ask. But, you know, the year itself didn't come up. Um, as a fun fact, Joliet, Illinois, I believe, was the first Dairy Queen. But the year, um, maybe 1964? It was, you're incorrect, first of all. Yeah. I guess I should give Mitch a crack. Fifty-six. You were both incorrect. I'm very disappointed in you guys. All the blizzards you eat and you don't know what year it's founded in. It's it was 1940. That's what it said on Wikipedia. So I'm going to go with 1940. <laughs> very, very reliable source. See, so yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say that this this matchup was pretty tight today. I'm going to have to go back and. And kind of collect the da data and come back with a watch the film of this and come back next week with with the winner. So I'm going to let everyone know next week. But I think yeah, I think it might be a tie and we might have have a tiebreaker going into the playoffs. Do you got? Would you guys like that? I'd probably be up for that. Thank thank you guys. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks for having us, Sean. We'll see you next week on Between Two Horns. <laughs> Thank you for watching another episode of Rams TV, brought to you by Desjardins Securities. Another historic game for the Regina Rams this Friday. It's the last regular season home game at the Old Mosaic Stadium in Regina Rams history. The 3-3 three three UBC Thunderbirds are in town to take on your 4-2 and two Regina Rams. It's looking like it's going to be a beautiful night on Friday. No rain, no snow, none of that in the forecast. Looking like it's going to be clear skies. Kickoff is Friday at 7 p.m. Until next week, I am your host, Sean Kleisinger.